With the debate raging nationwide about what to do about our border problem, the thing few talk about is exactly what happens when migrants get to the border and seek to cross legally. So let's go through it. First, they need to show a passport or visa to enter the U.S. If they don't, they're taken to the nearest border patrol station to be processed and detained. It's at that point they can request to apply for asylum. And it seems these days that's what they're all doing. Applying for asylum kicks a new process into gear. And asylum seekers are scheduled for what's called an affirmative asylum interview, where an officer decides whether they have, according to U.S. Code 1158, quote, established that race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group, or political opinion was or will be at least one central reason for persecuting the applicant. If the officer at the interview determines there's no credible fear or threat in the home country, the migrant's removal is ordered, and they're deported, unless the decision is appealed. If it's appealed, the case goes through a review process with an immigration judge who can then initiate another process to avoid deportation, including asylum. What happens when the country won't take them back, like Cuba or Venezuela? Then the U.S. has to decide whether to detain them long term or, I guess, release them. But if it's determined they have a credible fear, a hearing will be scheduled with a judge to hear the migrants' full asylum claim. Since it's such a huge backlog, it can sometimes take years for a judge to make a final ruling on an asylum seeker's claim. And while they wait for their hearing, they're sent to border facilities run by ICE. Migrants who've been processed can also travel to sponsors or friends in other parts of the United States who would be responsible for them. Then they have to return for their hearing or a judge could sign a removal order for them. If they're granted asylum, the person's protected from being sent back to the home country. They can apply for a social security card, get a job in the U.S., travel overseas, and even petition to have family members move here. Under Trump in 2020, denial rates were at 71 percent. Under, under President Biden in 2021, they fell to 63 percent. Back with me, the former acting director of ICE under President Obama, John Sandwig, and former deputy director and acting director of ICE under President Trump, and also uh, a former Border Patrol agent, Ron Vitello. Uh, all right, Ron, let me start with you. You know, I mentioned something there that got me thinking. What is the solution when it comes to countries where they won't take these people back? I mean, what can we possibly do? There's no sending them back. I guess there's a potential to send them to Mexico or something, but what, if, what are the options there? Well, well, Remain in Mexico, that, that project with Mexico, that, that's based in law, right? The, the INA grants that authority to the secretary. So that's one solution. Um, long term, you, you can't, you, you just spoke about the challenges in long term detention. Um, but you, you've got to start somewhere, right? If, if we're talking about Cuba or Venezuela, we've had diplomatic agreements with both of those countries for all manner of things, right? Oil export, oil import, all the kinds of things. Uh, you know, the, the Obama administration reached out their hand to Cuba and they started doing normalization with tourism and all these other kind of things. And so what are the incentives for Venezuela to take their people back? Uh, what, are, what are the carrots? What are the sticks? You've got to start having that conversation. If you can't remove people to Venezuela, you've got to have another alternative. Remain in Mexico, again, not perfect, but it did send the message that if you came into the United States, you weren't going to be released, which is what the goal of many of these people are. Um, and when, you, when you turn that off, you turn that incentive off, uh, people stay home because they know they're not going to be successful. You know, John, it does feel like so many more are just claiming asylum, right? It's like it's the magic word. You know that if you cross the border and you encounter a border agent, asylum, asylum, asylum. I mean, it just seems like it's an, it's an almost, it's not, quote, get out of free jail card, but it's certainly going to increase your chances by a heck of a lot to be able to stay in the country. Yeah, the problem, Dan, is, I hate to say it, it, it almost is a get out of jail free card right now. Uh, look, these immigration court backlogs that you referenced are, are overwhelming. You know, the Biden administration has added 100 judges, but we're still, that, that would only bring us up to about 600 judges. 
We have a backlog of more than 2 million cases. And when you look at these numbers that Ron was talking about of 200,000 people a month, with roughly 100,000 of them being led into the United States to process their asylum claim, you can do the math and realize there's no way the immigration courts can keep up with all of these asylum claims. Right. That's the crux of the problem. Uh, and the unfortunate reality is the smuggling organizations who really are responsible uh, for driving a lot of this migration to our border have figured out that the, the appropriate tactic here is to make an asylum claim, to coach the immigrants. If they make an asylum claim, they'll be able to stay here. And, and really, you know, Dan, the, 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 the kind of somewhat crazy thing I think will be a surprise to a lot of people is that because of these backlogs and because people can't be deported until uh, not only an immigration judge has ruled on their asylum claim, but they've also had a chance to appeal that decision, these people are here under color of law. They're actually legally entitled to be here uh, for years. One last point, Dan, very quickly, is the, the second problem is even when we do get a deportation order four, five, six years later, uh, it's very hard. I can tell you from when I was running ICE, it's very hard to deport those people. At that point, those people have built strong family ties in the U.S. They, have, they go to churches. They might have had another child or married a U.S. citizen. And now you're separating American families. So. It's, this is the root of the problem, is the lack of resources for the immigration courts. It, it's, not, it's not sexy. The politicians don't talk about it. But that is the fundamental so, but, but real problem. quick, so, so could a lot of these problems be solved with just funding? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, I think, Dan, look, there's two options. Ron's advocating to change the asylum laws, right? Modify the asylum laws so all these processes that people are entitled to are, are eliminated. I, I am with you. I, well, you didn't articulate an opinion, but I don't, I'm skeptical that Congress can possibly do that. I did. Congress by not... the way, I absolutely did express an opinion. Okay. I absolutely 100 <laughs> percent believe Congress will not pass a, a comprehensive immigration legislation. They, they won't. They won't. They haven't. For 20 years, we've been talking about this. It's not happening. But so then if we're not going to change the asylum laws, uh, and I wouldn't be supportive of that anyway, but if we're not going to do it, then we have to flood resources. You know, I used to work for Jenna Napolitano, and she said, we have to flood the zone with the rule of law. And that's exactly what we need to do, an unprecedented surge of resources to process these claims, process them quickly, process them fairly, but process them and get then actually execute yeah. the removals when we're done. And as soon as word gets out into the, to the world that, hey, there is no longer a free pass if you claim asylum, the numbers will right. drop. I got I got to wrap this one up, but you both are going to stay with us again, keeping in mind that both of these gentlemen served as the director of ICE. So this is this is good stuff. It's important stuff. It's an important conversation. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.